the cause of death is really a very important data. And it's one of our job. And uh, in fact, it's really, it's really important to impart the information for you to, to practice later on. Because the cause of death is the one that is being accounted or counted for in order to compute for crude death, crude uh, death rate, for age-specific mortality rate, the cost-specific mortality rate, and everything. But if the cause of death or the death certification is not filled up in a in its supposedly format, then the quality of the data would be compromised. Okay? So when we talk about back, the cause of death, we're going to discuss on the background, the sources of the cause of death, the certification and coding, the analysis of cause of death, the uses, and in international indicators using the cause of death. But uh, not not uh, we'll talk, we'll discuss them in passing. But this is a very important topic that you must also uh, take note of because in our practice, it's an a part of an of, of an a, a part of our practice or in a that you will encounter. Okay, both in the field and in the hospital. Okay, so by the end of the session, to be able to understand how cause of death data are generated, know how to conduct basic cause of death analysis, because death, as, death, as you all know, is a, also vital statistical data, and how to calculate the international cause of death indicators. Not that much. Okay, so what are the top 10 cause of death, causes of death? Okay. So, for example, in 2013, so the one that I reported, okay, this is the global burden of disease in 2013, is ischemic heart disease and cardiovascular disease and COPD, uh, respiratory infections, HIV AIDS and TB, Alzheimer's, and trachealer bronchitis and lung cancer, and Okay, H HIV and AIDS alone, and diabetes mellitus. So from one, two, and three, these are um, non-communicable diseases. Okay, so of the ten leading causes, you have seven, eight. Out of the 10 leading causes for the global burden of diseases, out of the 10 top 10 causes of death, 8 are non-communicable. Only about oh no, 7, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 1, 2, and 3. 7 are non-communicable and 3 are communicable. So Really, there should be a shift in focus in terms of uh, preventive and community medicine. So we should not we should not just be focusing on infections or infectious diseases, but rather to shift as well and to have a more strategic and more enhanced programs for non-communicable diseases, but maintaining the specific strategies for communicable diseases. Okay, so why is cause of death data very important? Okay, at the national level or international agencies, global and cost specific mortality estimates for ICD coding. So we need to standardize that one so that we can compare again, as I've said a while ago, from one area to the other. For the local public health managers, especially the top ranking causes of death and public health priorities, is to monitor trends over time and evaluating public health interventions. So which means which means with the with the current programs or public health uh, strategies that we are performing are we really reducing, are we really successful in implementing and improving the health or the life of the people? So the cause of death is an indicator of that. So for other health uh, workers or epidemiologists and other service uh, researchers, so relating to specific population subgroups to interpret 
part situations in terms of mortality patterns, okay? And for managers, institutional managers, and clinical auditors to determine the patterns of death within institution and the healthcare systems in order to monitor trends over time and within departments so that they can also equip their manpower in terms of capacity as well as capability, okay? The capacity and the capability of the institution. For the medic medical and legal practitioners, especially for individual causes for particular cases, it is for following up consequences of individual deaths. So for the cause of death, if there's a question, especially for uh, medical, medical legal cases, it's really very important to document the, the cause of death. Okay? And uh, in fact, if we go to the public health, fortunately now there's at least an enhanced training on medical legal examination. But during our time, and at least during our time, medical legal was really uh, was really a big puzzle. So I, for one, really underwent a training from NBI in order to be able to conduct a medical legal examinations. Because if you're a public health officer, a rural health unit officer, MSO, one of your responsibilities is to be a medical legal doctor or medical legal officer. So autopsy the field, there's no other person to who will do that but you. Uh, I think at this point in time, there's a change because we have already medical legal officers and some families opted for their uh, victims or their uh, patients their family members that is a victim of a heinous crime to be or to undergo a medical examination either from the police or from the NBI. So, one una, kao gurit magnanaw na ulit to. Ano mi to pag autopsy. So, but uh, I for one was only amenable with the external examination or an autopsy. Ito ang mga pangurot-gurot na dito, di rin nakikit na agad. Bahala nila ito. Okay. Di rin lang basta-basta nga i-go-autopsy ito. Ito ang cadaver dito ha field. Okay? So, how can we use cause of death data? So, to study and explain trends or differences in overall mortality, so to guide resource allocation for interventions like for intervention programs, biomedical and social medical research, to monitor public health programs, health risks and health interventions, and to provide clues for epidemiological research. So cause of death is a puzzle in itself. In fact, even at EVRMC, we're having problem for in conducting autopsies because of, especially at this point in time uh, with the pandi pandemic, it's kind of difficult to conduct autopsy. And um, it's a requirement for residency, residency in pathology that you cannot graduate if you will not be able to conduct autopsy examinations. So the, and the, the data that would be taken out of the autopsy is, is an important guide for us in in healthcare. Okay? So what are the cause of death data need to, to be comparable over time and also between countries? And it should provide an overview of the total mortality burden and it should be able to identify vulnerable populations wherever or whenever it's possible. So where is it possible and who are uh, possibly affected? And it should be disaggregated by age and sex and include numbers, rates, and proportions. So the cause of death, it's kind of unfortunate, as I've said um, before, that uh, most of our health workers at the local level are not equipped in data utilization as well as in data quality, data quality uh, formulation. Okay. So what are the underlying cause of death? This is the the main, this is the main component, although we are mainly interested in underlying cause of death. So of that green form, I will show you later, uh, the important component is the underlying cause of death. So it's defined as the disease or injury 
which initiated the sequence or chain of events leading directly to death. It's defined by the double, by WHO in 1994. What does this mean? Where you would intervene to prevent the death. So it's really important to understand what do we mean in saying the underlying cause of death, okay? So for example, look at this picture. What can you see? Diba, a, a man in front of the big truck, okay? So, anot magiging underlying cause of death ni Nina? Okay? So, accident, right? It was an accident. Okay, so because of that accident, he was hospitalized. Okay? So, the immediate causes are the clinical care that are... Ay, so, ano ba yung sasabot ko? The immediate causes are the clinical care that were give, that were given to the patient or to the the victim. Okay. However, the underlying cause is the not just the accident but the this one. Okay. So this is the underlying cause which needs public health intervention. Although it's an accident, yes, but what kind of accident it was, okay? So, where do we get the cause of death data from? From the health facilities. So, it's a biased source, actually. From the police records, from the coroner's office in, 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 in other countries, but here we call that at the NBI or at the police because they have a medical legal officer as well at the police, and uh, also from verbal autopsy. In fact, um, if you're a public health worker or a rural health unit, uh, a municipal health officer, it's really important to learn the skill of conducting verbal autopsy. Because sometimes if, if you are working in a far-flung municipality and it's difficult to go to the specific area or barangay or or sitio to conduct an autopsy and you won't have the access or you will have the difficulty of looking into the the, the person or the dead body then verbal autopsy is really very important and I for one is an expert I for one has been doing a lot of verbal autopsy because I was working then in a highly uh, infested area are highly there was a high incidence of how do you call that NPA in my area so it was kind of difficult to go to to its barangays especially the barangays has to be has no uh, no roads it has no uh, roads road condition you have to walk like the minimum was four hours in order to reach the barangay so and uh, most of the time, if I go there, I don't want an, an an escort of coming from the police force because the more my life would be endangered. So instead of going through that process, so usually I would uh, tell my the barangay captain or whatever to take pictures. And una din po man kasi uso on pictures. So at Please to give me a what happened to the patient, to the dead body. So I was there were, because we were also asked to do some autopsy for complaints and other needed documentations of death. So another is lay reporting and community records or village register if there is and church, church leaders. And um, it was really, you know, although I, you work there, it was kind of difficult to keep track of the mortality because some people don't report the the that that the deaths that are happening in their area, especially if it's it involves from involves uh, incidents with the insurgency. Or insurgents at the, at the area. So, papasagdan mo nila. Kaya alam mo, ito nyo yung pagkahiro-hiro kay ito, lo titira, lalabtan. So, however, 
when times that there is a monetary compensation out of that death, ah, mapalat nila pagparehistro. So, yun, nabi mo, hindi mo din ahad pa nagkamagtay, nga wala hindi magkalilista. For that matter, ang mga birds, kasi di, wala good talaga karsada. Out of the 15 monis- barangays, and may dala accessible left for, by road, kung ano na kabugos, mga 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6 na siguro ka barangays. The rest, Puro bukid na. Okay? So, in terms of certainty, so, in terms of certainty, from the lay reporting, kaya't pinakalawes, so, di ka sure, bangin iba't pagkakaintindi, imo parag So, other uh, health reporting, or verbal autopsy, or survey or routine, syempre, hospital de- research data has higher uh, certainty. Medical certification by a qualified practitioner. So, this coming from, I know, this coming from the NBI here in our country as well as from the police force. And uh, you all know there are high ranking private persons who are very good in doing autopsies or certifications. And even us ourselves are, have that qualification somehow. Pero, adi pa siguro kita didiha, ano. And uh, as well as autopsy, okay? So the gold standard for cause of death data are those that certify using the WHO standard cause of death certificate, okay? So there is a international statistical classification of diseases and related health problems. So this one is being utilized in order to identify the underlying cause of death. Because in the coding, especially at the hospital, this is necessary for field health uh, identification and as well as in the compensations for in the compensations for hospitalization of the patient or the dead the, the body. So Actually, this ICD classification is a standardized way also of identifying the underlying cause of death. So whatever whatever uh, cause of death we have identified, it has to be follow, it has to follow the ICD ten, so that there's again a similar understanding of the particular cause of death from one country to the other, and. Um, it has come to a place when the Philippines has adopted the ICD-10 that all health workers must under training on ICD-10 classification. So, in fact, at the hospital levels, the ICD-10, there's an ICD-10 uh, clerk or experts that will identify the different causes of death or different mortality as well as morbidity. Okay. So this is the form, the very important uh, aspect in the death certification here. So as a municipal health officer or a medical officer or a doctor, this blank spaces on the A, B, C, and D are the one that we should fill up. Okay. So again, the important one is the underlying cause. Okay. So, the underlying cause of death. Okay? So, if you're the medical officer or the municipal health officer, you are the one that would be filling this out. So, it's really very important, especially at the look, especially if you are not the attending physician, but as a municipal health officer, you are required by law to supply the certification or the certificate of cause of death. Okay? So, for the inter- for example, in that incident, Kanina, that there was a, a guy or a man that was hit by the truck. Okay? So, the underlying cause, which is the C, was the pedestrian hit by the truck. So, however, the direct cause was the traumatic shock which was due to multiple fractures is the antecedent cause and due to the underlying cause, which is the pedestrian hit by track. So this pedestrian hit by track, again, as was shown in the slide, 
uh, before is the one that needs or this is being focused for public health intervention. Okay? So, because you cannot do a public health intervention in the multiple fractures because she, it's already a consequence of the pedestrian, knowing that that, that person or pedestrian was being hit by the truck. Okay? So, for mortality coding, each death is counted, assigned cause of death, and coded once. So, its specific rules and principles for mortality coders are followed. It should be standardized and comparable, and this become our cause of death statistics. Again, mortality coding is primarily interested in underlying cause of death. Okay, so the mortality coding again that was that's being used is the ICD-10. Okay. It, this coding transforms the text on that certificate into alphanumeric codes. So may adin nila yaging kikamit. So that's why for for ICD-10, uh, the training is about three, five days or three, two to three days because there is a there is a book that is being used in the workshop for the health workers to be familiar with, so that in at the in practice, that's the one that they will have to look into encoding for mortality as well as morbidity, okay? So, following the ICD-10, the coded data can be aggregated into national statistics and compared, so between districts or provinces, countries, and over time. So, that answers the standardization, okay? So, ICD-10 is a clear coding rules and processes for cost of death information as well as morbidity, okay? So, for example, this is the relevant ICD code for that particular patient. So, it was pedestrian injured in collision with heavy transport vehicle or bus. So, it has a code which is P04. If that code is being used and the... Uh, the coding uh, book is also looking to um the description is up very much appropriate with what happened okay will not go so much about the you uh, know the for the the icd10 code the general guidelines is there so it's actually locally designed the list of uh, mortality codes, okay? And it's the mortality code. Mortality codes are, or the mortality or loss of death are disaggregation or disaggregated by age and sex, okay? Because it differs, the cause of death differs among children and by age and sex among adults. And it's really very important to disaggregate in order to make the data more meaningful, okay? So in looking into the disaggregation by age and sex, it's it's uh, the recommended groups for analysis is five year age group. So by sex or or under five deaths, separation between under one and from one to five years. Okay. So in presenting patterns for cause of death, this one is more appropriate. So less than five years, five to fourteen years, fifteen to fifty nine and 60 plus years, okay? So age grouping, in order for that to be more um, minimal. And we all know that under five years old have has more or less similar similarities in terms of the causes of death, okay? So However, if there are only smaller populations or dead data set, we can disaggregate by three years. Okay. By cost, we have cost specific mortality, which was already. And when we talk about proportional mortality, so it's the proportion of total deaths due to specific costs. So often calculated is the proportion of deaths for which cause is known. So in many cases, cause of death not known for entire population. So it's important to disaggregate 
for uh, to to implement or to apply this aggregation by age for children and by age and sex in adults. Okay, so the formula is this one: the numerator is the number of deaths from specific uh, disease over the total deaths in a given period of time, and it is usually expressed as percentage. Okay, so here is an example. Can you compute for this one, please? For the proportion of mortality, this is the formula. And this is these are the data. So can you please compute for proportion of mortality for for communicable as well as non-communicable diseases? Okay, what's the answer, guys? Hello? Papakamo? Sixty nine point seven for the communicable. Okay, for the other one. Anybody? What's the answer? 21.5. for that. Okay, let's see. It's 21.5%, so very good. So, in the vital statistics, computation is is a must. And what the good thing is, at least there's a formula to follow. And this formula are the one that are being used to standardize, not just here in our country but worldwide. Okay. So example of proportional mortality in Malaysia. So look at the pie graph. So the big picture is cardiovascular, and the next is the communicable diseases, and then they have uh, other NCDs, other NCDs, and then injuries. Uh, first, it, uh, third, the uh, leading cause are cancers. Fourth is other NCDs. Fifth is injuries, and the Next was C CR, chronic respiratory diseases, and last is diabetes. So if you will notice in the cause of morbidity and mortality, and uncommunicable diseases, all, especially mortality, non-communicable diseases are high now as compared to before 1970s or in before 90s. Okay. So we already discussed this one, right? The cost specific quality. Okay. Okay. So it's really very important to standardize by age for children and by age and sex in adults so that a standardization needed if white adult age grouping so that the rates of, uh, so that the, in the and comparison, more or less, it's appropriate. Okay? And the rates are affected by population age distribution. And in the older the population, the higher the rate of NCDs. Okay? And this, again, is a part of the Sustainable Development Goals wherein it's goal 3.4 and 3.5 that by 2020 is to reduce one-third of premature mortality from non-communicable diseases through prevention and treatment and promote mental health and well-being. And by uh, 3.5, by 2020, 
abot na kung maatiin na natin yun, tapos na kita kay 2021, have the number of global deaths and injuries from road traffic accidents. Parang mahirap ata to. Especially nowadays that motorcycle and uh, bicycles have uh, increased. Diba? So, in the suicide mortality rate, there's also So a computation for that, the number of suicides in specific area or time place. So population denominator is the population in specific time or place expressed by 100,000. So the disaggregation is very important as to age, the place of residence, to sex and socioeconomic status. There's also a coding for the suicide mortality rate. And for road traffic deaths, they also have the ICD code which is VO1 to V99. So what different shades from one to the other is the type of vehicle and the type of vehicle and the injury that is incurred. So it has to also, uh, it must also be age standardized so that it, it can be compared to other countries. Okay. So what are the WHO 104 indicators for mortality? One, TB mortality. Okay, the estimated number of deaths due to TB over population and the age related mortality rate, AIDS related rather, so estimated number of deaths due to AIDS related causes over population, malaria mortality rate. So, more or less, uh, there are only few areas here in the country that has uh, endemic mal for malaria. So, fortunately for us, in data, we are not more part of that. So, example, you can you can compute for TB in in Turkey. So how would you compute this one? The formula is the numerator is the TB deaths, okay, over the total population. Okay, what's the answer, guys? Five percent, point five per one hundred thousand population. Okay, it's per one hundred thousand, so it's point zero 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 five per one hundred thousand, or point five percent per one hundred thousand population. Very good. Okay, so here's the analysis of leading causes of death. So again, okay. In analysis of leading causes of death, it's not as meaningful when deaths are grouped across all ages and both sexes. So, in making useful, in making your leading cause of death tables more useful, so make sure that the total number of deaths is reported. Okay, and there should be a separate reporting for males and female, and by broad age groups. Okay. What about if unknown cause of death? Because in many countries, a large proportion of deaths do not have a cost assigned to them. This only this also includes deaths where the cost of death is clearly incorrect. So when looking at the leading cost of death, it's also useful to include this in our analysis. Okay, and uh, if there are a lot of unknown causes of death, it's really an indicator to improve the CRVS system. Okay, so if this happens. The analysis of cause of death, they call it anaconda. Okay, so if there's ANOVA, there's also anaconda. Okay, so we will not, I know, we will not, uh, we're not already done with this one. So, using your cause of death, the story suggests data with a so. So, it's really important to identify. Okay, so we're done with the topic. I will show you the the schedule that we're, we're supposed to follow before your first bi monthly. So we already are done with the introduction to bi statistics. Okay, we're already done with the indices. We are also the meaning and uses of vital statistical data. The population growth is also in, incorporated in the collection of vital statistics. So we, I still have like two 
two topics the that would be included for the first by monthly uh, so disregard the test of significance that would be for your second by monthly okay so i still have to lecture on the in variability and graphs and tables so i still have like time i can start with the measures of central tendency okay so that the remaining topic for what day is our next class? What do you think, guys? Saturday. Huh? Saturday. This coming Saturday? Yes. So I still have how many um how many uh, lectures before your first guys duha pa no duha pa no ha duha pa chelsea orang orang 3 po no counting this uh, saturday uh this saturday and next saturday so i still have like three no so anyway um uh, we can stop now because so you can rest so we'll just start with the measures of central tendency and variability next time because it's entirely different uh, ball game as compared to the mortality statistics and the cause of death. So again, the takeaway for the cause of death is is the underlying cause. Okay. To determine the underlying cause. So, as a health worker, as a doctor in the future, what's important in filling up the cause of death, the form, hey, kita nag fill up talaga ito, it's one of our responsibility, is to ensure to be able to identify the cause, the underlying cause of death. Because it's the one that is being counted for, counted and accounted for, for programmatic uh, evaluation as well as for in future interventions. And uh, I would like also for you guys to understand and memorize somehow the mortality of the young, uh, the mortality in the early childhood, because that would help you in identifying the different types of mortality. Okay? That figure was. Uh, that figure was created by the University of Melbourne, and it was a summary of all the mortality in the early childhood. But uh, take note of that, and you even make a you know a picture of that and laminate it because at least you won't have difficulty in determining the differences of mortality in the early childhood. So, pag sinyak lang kina what's perinatal mortality because it's always, always, almost always a, a, those type of indicators are always being discussed in many of your subjects from, from pediatrics, uh, in preventive and community medicine, definitely in your ob So, in other, in other subjects, it's, incorporated okay so that figure would truly help you in your in, in identifying and determining the different types of mortalities in early childhood okay so any question and thank you for answering the computation okay so let's just have the other topics the other lectures on uh, measures of central tendency as well as on the graphical presentations. And I think um, I will finish the graphical pre presentation before you have your first by month. Okay? And uh, the test of significance is, is a very long lecture, in fact, but I was able to finish the very long lecture and test of significance for at least three hours course yata kanina, di oh my god as in, nag-ulog pa na ulo, just imagine it's you're going to lecture a statistical analysis or bias in a deeper context on 
to resident Maybe physicians. Dog. I don't know. Hello. So they take. Hmm. Okay. Excuse me, po, dog. Um, confirmation lang po, dog. No long quiz na po. Direction na lang by monthly. Oh. An ano man gusto niya magpis kita? No po, dog. <laughs> Ayon. <laughs>